ones are not opening. That one's open. The rest of them are all opened up already. But these two are stuck. Stuck on. We got some new sequencers. We're just gonna go ahead and replace all three. All right, got the three new sequencers in. Turn them on here. Hey, look at that. Heater's not running. Heater's not running. So that's a good thing. We don't want it to be running. We're not calling for it. This is that wire that had the loose connection. If we had left it alone and didn't change it, it would gonna eventually look like this one. That is obvious heat damage. Loose connection, it starts to heat up and that heat starts to travel the wire, melts the coating. Wire is sized by how many amps it's gonna have, but expects the entire size of the wire to evenly distribute the power. Essentially with a loose connection, it's like you're trying to feed all that power through this little bit of wire instead of all of this wire. It'll work for a little while, but there's gonna be a lot of heat generated. It'll start glowing cherry red and eventually burn in two. You'll start seeing signs like this first, and then it'll eventually quit working completely, burn in two. And this was the part that we had to change. This is a single stack sequencer for electric heat. It lets power flow from here to here once you apply 24 volts here and here, and the same up here. This is a double sequencer here that I have put on my test board. Just a bunch of parts I've taken out of old equipment to try to teach and test with. And this right here is an exploded view of one of these sequencers. We've taken it apart. You apply 24 volts on the two brass terminals. And as you see, they're not connected inside. This little heat cup actually sits down on there. This is a resistive material, so it doesn't create a dead short, but it will start generating heat. So that just sits down on there. And here is a little snap disc. It sits on that. It's like an upside down bowl. So it's like one of those little metal lids you can snap. It flexes. And it normally sits up here like an upside down bowl. Just the outside edges touching the place. So when you apply electric here and here, it's going to heat up that outer ring. And it's going to make that little thing snap to where instead of being an upside down bowl, it'll be a right side up bowl. When that happens, it lets these little rods fall down. This has two rods in it that go up in the center. And as they sit on that, they're held up in the air. So that little rod right there is being pushed up when not in use. And as it's normally pushed up, it's lifting that metal connection right there. So electric can't flow from this side to that side. When that little snap disc heats up and flips, that lets this little rod slide down. When it slides down, it lets that come down and then it makes a bridge so the electricity can freely flow through. Same thing happens with this top one. It just has a longer rod. So of course, I'm not just gonna tell you about it. Let's see one in action. All right, so I got my ground hooked up there. Got my red over here ready to hook up. We'll apply it on there. And we'll just wait. That clicking sound is what we hear whenever it heats up. So if we take the power off of it now, it should cool back down. And that's all there is to those. It's just a simple little device. It sounds more complicated than it is, but when you break it down to its bare bones, it's not that complicated. All right, so now I have this double sequencer. I have it wired up to my lights here. As the sequencer is lit, power across. There's four lights and there's four sequencers. Two double stacks controlling two circuits. So to my lights, I have each side going to neutral. And then my hot side I have fed over here just for a jumper. And then jumpered them all out from the same hot leg of power. I wired my low voltage to my switch so I can kick it on to power it. Now this double sequencer has the bar connecting the two low voltage controls so when you power one, power will go through that bar and control the other. If you don't want that, you can simply cut that bar out and then run different control voltage so they can be powered independently. 
So let's turn it on and see if it works. We have power on, so we should have voltage there. As we hear it click, we should start seeing lights come on. There's the first one. Here comes the blue, there goes the white. Now like I said, these are rated in how many seconds it takes for them to sequence on as well as sequence off. So when I turn it back off, they're not immediately going to go off. There's the first one sequenced out. And there's the second one. Hopefully you guys found that entertaining. Hopefully you learned something. Let me know what you thought. And let me know if you want to see more learning about these other components.